Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor and his friends give you sports betting tips. I'm your host, Professor Sides, in this episode of Major League Baseball Picks, a lot on the prices that make for good bets using the predictive mathematical model I've built, affectionately known as Sideline, for games scheduled to be played on Friday, July 28th, 2023. In case you're new here, check out the webpage on the banner. It's www.pickswiththeprofessor.com slash new for some explanations and community rules. Remember, if you're interested in projections and picks on every single game, sign up on Dub Club. That link's in the show description. Cost under $1 per day. And you'll get money lines, run lines, first fives, totals, numbers needed for A grade picks, all sorts of good information, weather information, and of course, access to our Discord chat where we discuss line movements, weather changes, pitching changes, all sorts of things, plays we're looking to make or not make on sports cover here, and all sorts of other things you can bet on. Remember that sports are unpredictable, so the discussion on this show projects a typical game does not try to forecast it to a T. So it would be a foolish and impossible goal. There are no right sides or wrong sides or other prices where any side should be played. Whether using my model or someone else's, this sort of thinking is what is key to growing your bankroll instead of draining it. The idea being have a price where you think that's the right price and the wrong price on both sides. If you can't come up with a number on both sides, you're not doing it right because there is a number where you play both sides. Even really, be really bad things might be a really high number, right? But there is a number. You will have some ups and downs, of course, with gambling, but it will balance out in the long run. It's just hard to foresee before it happens, especially hard to foresee before, you know, a pitcher getting tossed, you know, in the first inning. In other words, please understand the good and bad variants will occur. So the long run profitability has been proven and every single day is an impossible reality for any gambler. Uh, Cousin Drew, unless I snuck that in there, uh, mm-hmm. this game last night, you know, you have a pitcher tossed in the first inning, and I, 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 n- number one, it, it was clearly an accident on the backswing. Mm-hmm. Um, Hap was, you know, moderately apologetic. You know, it wasn't like he, you, you know, was like, ha I hurt you, sucker. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I just, I know there's a lot of old school baseball people and whatnot, but I don't know. I just personally don't think you should be throwing um, a baseball at, at someone on purpose. Uh, there's yeah. really no need for that. I feel like we, we should be more civilized at this point. We can use our words, you know, yeah. rather than um, try to hurt somebody. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's uncalled for, of course. Uh, and, uh, you know, you get, he, get, he gets run like that. And then, then the game just goes sideways. We got the over, uh, you know, from that. But I feel like at that point, any, backing the Cardinals, you're like, oh, this is going to spell trouble. It's just really hard to yeah. have that you know, from your relievers when they weren't prepared for it, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I completely agree. That would put them in a really bad spot from from the get-go, but like, just glad that we were also involved in, in the over there because at least that kind of helped us there. I would like to take a moment of silence for my Shohei Otani takes um, pitching yesterday. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since I've had one where I just like, after the game, I was like, man, I was just so, so wrong. Um so yeah, good good for him. As if he wasn't one of the best players in the game, maybe the best player in the game, just go out and throw a complete game, you know. I one one hitter, uh th- yeah. like three walks, only left four base runners. Uh yeah. yeah, I mean, what an amazing performance by him. It sounds yeah. like he'll be okay. Sounds like it was the, 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 what they're saying. You never know what they're saying, of course, is cramps, he'll be hydrated, yeah. he'll play to, play tonight. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, you you hope that you hope to see good players in the lineup always would never hope for an injury for anybody but yeah what an incredible performance from him uh and of course that'll be thrown into the model and it will reflect you know his underlying metrics definitely got better after last night and uh you know his rating will go up after that that was you know even though it was only the tigers right caveat the tigers right offense we'll talk about the tigers today right but it was still an incredible of course pitching performance and much better than he'd been looking uh cousin jared for only five games there was a lot to talk about the weird weather delay in in the mets game and i say weird because it happened to come with bases loaded one out like the timing of that was yeah and it was lightning it wasn't like it was like you know that sort of thing so but but uh, that was kind of wild. Uh, uh, Bybee, I think, kind of did what we expected. It's just that Cease, you know, giving up all those runs to a subpar Guardians offense was a little surprising. Uh, but, I but I don't care who's pitching. Whoever gives up lots of runs to the Guardians, I, I feel shocked when that happens. Especially an above average pitcher, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Some of the below average guys, you're like, whatever. But even then, we've seen the Guardians offense struggle against really bad pitching a lot yeah. this season. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the Angels Tigers. We're gonna we're gonna talk a lot about that here uh, today. We're covering both of those games today. 
Uh, yeah, Kissinger, I just have to mention, you know, we did, we talked about, we did nail game two, right? You, you know, we, we had the Angels. They were a B grade pick for the full game. That was the one you were saying. Maybe take the first five. If you played the full game or the first five at work, we had the yeah. over on that one as well. We nailed game two. We just picked the wrong game. This is what we talk about. Yeah. We, we literally yeah. talked about the gesture, and of course it happens, right? We're not yeah. like picking the best games or the worst games or whatever. We're just kind of randomly picking things to, to do on here. And of course, we, we didn't talk about that one. But, but if you're with us on Dub Club, you know, that game went exactly as planned for game two. So game one didn't go as well. Game two did. Uh, yeah. That's kind of the last thing I will want to mention, though. We aren't talking about the Cardinals-Cubs game uh, tonight, but something to think about that bullpen, um, you know, issues for the Cardinals yeah. now. That, yeah. that, you know, you never know how that's going to play out, you know, who they're going to call up and how they're going to try to get innings and that sort of thing. It's, it's not exactly easy, but that's something to kind of keep in mind that their bullpen might be – a little taxed after yeah. uh, what happened last night. But uh, again, a lot to talk about today, even though we aren't covering that game. Uh, before we get to it, some quick reminders. Please hit that like button if you're on YouTube. If you aren't yet, please consider subscribing or following. It's free. And if you turn on notifications, you won't miss any of the MLB, college basketball, college football, or coming this fall NFL content that this channel provides. You can see how I scale picks in the Google Sheet that's got season results, team metrics, starting pitcher ratings all sorts of goodies that links in the show description but as always scaling the picks take what you like and leave the rest those aforementioned tigers uh pretty rough spot for them after yeah, getting yeah. polished in both games of a double header yesterday um you know having to now travel to miami and face a pretty good starting pitcher, uh, according to sideline, Braxton Garrett gets an 85 grade. That's one full standard deviation better than the league average. His ERA is inflated at 432, but the underlying metrics are much more promising. He projects to be uh, close to a full run per nine better than that. But I'd say the same thing about Reese Olsen, 453 ERA, but his advanced metrics are better than that. I definitely think Garrett's the better pitcher, but both of these guys, I think, have been kind of subject to some bad luck. Uh, when you look under the hood, I think both of them are good pitchers. And of course, both these offenses are below average the tigers offense of course completely floundering the marlins offense a little bit below average not a ton but you know not the strongest offensive team decent sets of relievers here i think the total is something that's really interesting to talk about but we will come back to that momentarily the pick for this game is marlins minus 145 it's a b grade pick by the hair of its chitty chin chin a grade price is minus 143 b grade price is minus 155 or better model says the marlins win this 62 percent of the time the model does know about the travel the distance when they played yesterday i don't have double headers coded in because you just see them so rarely I, I guess i should add that at some point just for a little bit more preciseness uh so the model isn't taking into account that the tigers played two games yesterday so if you want to give the marlins a little bit of a boost though you could easily talk yourself into this being an a grade play uh cousin jared you had a lot of options to pick from here uh mm -hmm. on today's slate why did the marlins make the cut for you yeah the marlins made the cut like you said this is a, a terrible spot for the tigers and, and not only playing the double header at home catching the flight down to miami for tonight but just the way that they lost <laughs> the games yesterday yeah. neither of them fairly close just kind of getting um demolished there that's the, be, the biggest. Had to be a depressing plane, plane, plane ride. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, these are major league baseball players. We know that they're traveling well and everything. But you also have to remember that I feel like baseball did a, a better job a couple of years ago, of making sure that teams were like more routinely getting days off. You know, even at the beginning of the season, you've got teams that like have some Fridays off um, now. And so I, I think this is really just a, a tough travel spot um, for them. We kind of talked about do, would you you know lay the run with the Marlins here because it's such a bad spot with the the Tigers. Me personally, I'm still playing it on the money line. Um, Braxton Garrett, while he's been good on the season as a whole, his last couple of starts haven't been as good. Uh, he's given up six home runs uh, in his past five starts. Um, you know, I, I know you mentioned um, he's had his underlying metrics are better, and a lot of those home runs can just kind of be some some bad luck. You know, what, one pitch can kind of make a difference there. Um, so that's the reason that I would probably recommend playing this on the money line, even if there's just as much value um, laying the run or run and a half. I, I think I want to be on the money line on the Marlins here. And there's, gosh, there's so much to talk about with with what you just said here that I want to unpack. Uh, first, let's talk about the home runs, right? Uh, that's something that, for the most part, is pretty random. I think it's pretty random um, 
for major league pitchers. I think that's the thing you have to consider uh, of that population. We talk about mm -hmm. this a lot in statistical sciences, right? What your population is. And if your population size is major league pitchers, for the most part, it's pretty random. Um, the home run per fly ball rate, you typically don't see better pitchers with lower rates. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and weaker pitchers with higher rates, you typically see better pitchers get worse strikeouts and don't give up fly balls as much because they're striking out guys and or you get the guys like Framber Valdez that we always talk about, right, with such a gr good ground ball ratio tends to not give up a lot of home runs because he's keeping the ball on the ground, right? But your home run to fly ball ratio is generally thought of as pretty consistently, uh, you know, over time, it's going to balance out. The, the, the caveat to that, of course, is what park you play in, right? If you're playing yeah. in Cincinnati in the summer, you're playing in Coors Field, places like that, you're going to give up more home runs per fly balls. And that's part of those underlying metrics that we talk about, that he's kind of been unlucky with the fly balls being out a little bit yeah. more. But the reason why it's pretty random, and some of you some of you already know this, I'm preaching to the choir, some of you don't. The reason why it's random is, is when you talk about a, a major league pitcher allowing a fly ball, the difference between a home run and an out is such a micro fraction of an yeah. inch of how it yeah. comes off the, the bat that uh, in the long run, that's just kind of a, you're randomly going to have that go the wrong way for you in a few games and give up a few more home runs in the right way, a few ways. And it kind of balances out. It's not really not allowing fly balls that aren't home runs. It's not really a skill. Once you get right. to the major leagues, it is a skill in that I would give up, a, you know, a ton of home runs per fly balls probably because they would just be crushing the ball. Right. But once you get to the yeah. major league level, we don't really see that. So you talk about, that's the underlying metric talk about that we still trust Garrett, even though he has given up some home runs. I don't really yeah. think that's predictive of what's going to happen going forward. But you mentioned the run line. We always talk about the run line with the total. The projected total in this one, according to the model, 7.8. Honestly, if I didn't have a model, I would have said 7. I'm really surprised the model thinks it's that high, given these offenses and given these starting pitchers, especially because the model isn't looking at ERA whatsoever. It's only looking at the more predictive underlying metrics. The actual total in this is 7.5. I, I, the model would not play it. I'm not playing it, but I mean, I kind of feel like under makes a lot of sense. Like, isn't seven the most likely outcome? Couldn't no. you see this game being like two to one or five to nothing? Or I no. mean, a really low scoring game. I, maybe there's going to be runs. I don't know. Maybe the model's seeing something. I'm not, but this feels like a really low scoring game with two below average offenses and two pitchers that I think are much better than their areas indicate. Yeah, let's, let's put it this way. There's no way in hell I would go over. I, that, that, that's how that's how I would phrase it. So if this is something yeah. you're interested in, uh, you know, for my pro total uh, process with totals, you know, this doesn't meet the bar, but it, it's just one of those things. There, there's no way in hell I'd play this game over. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, this is one of those where, like, if the actual total it never will be, if it was set at six and a half, I would be like. I probably should go over, but I don't know if I yeah, can. I don't yeah. want to, right? Because yeah, I don't really yeah. think this is going to be a low-scoring game. And we talk about the, the A-grade price for the run line right now is off by a couple of cents as well. So right now, you've got a B-plus pick on the money line or the run line. If you like the run line, of course, it is a bad travel spot. The, the Tigers' offense could get shut out in this one, absolutely. Um, but if we are talking about a lower-scoring game, it makes the run line a little bit less likely to hit. So it is a situation where the run line, maybe not the craziest pick, but cousin Jared, I'm kind of like you because a lower scoring game, I think the money line price is fine enough. I think that's probably mm -hmm. just a place to stick again, a B plus pick. And if you want to bump it up a little bit because of the travel spot from the double header yesterday, uh, or less travel spot, more just the double header yesterday. Uh, I think it's perfectly fine to play an A grade. The last thing I want to talk about with this is we talk about, you know, as the season goes along, baseball's a grind. It's a, it's a sport that in, in football, in football, you, you, for the most part, for the most part, and this isn't true for every single game, but nine times out of 10 football, you're getting max effort every single day. You might have better weeks of practice and better preparation, but you get on the field, you're only playing so many games. And if you're not going max effort, that's when you get hurt. Right. So I mean, you, you right. get a that and it's, it's, you know, what you're getting from the players. Baseball was such a long sport. You yeah. do get to this part of the summer where it's a grind, the tigers, you know, another disappointing season here. Yeah. Uh, after that yesterday, you know, I'm not saying these guys didn't have a nice, enjoyable night at a luxury hotel that, you know, you and I will never yeah, be able to yeah. afford, right? you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, yeah. but you do have to wonder about things like that. Something else to kind of keep in the back of your mind here as we get into past the trade deadline, how many of these guys are hoping they get traded, right? There's just a lot happening here. Uh, but the Marlins here are pretty strong pick either B plus or a minus kind of depending on how you want to view the double header situation for the Tigers.
the team that took advantage of them there, uh, Angels will be traveling to Toronto, a short travel spot, of course, from Detroit. They also played a doubleheader, and that's not ideal, uh, but at least the travel is a really short plane ride uh, yeah, over yeah. the border. It'll be a nice night in Toronto, uh, as opposed to our next game that we're going to talk about where it will not be a nice night. Uh, low 70s, I project the roof will be open. I don't think it's going to change too much. Uh, I think it's going to play like pretty standard in this ballpark. Should be nice weather. Um, you know, and, and and they've adjusted the dimensions there at the Rogers Center as well, a park that used to be pretty hitter friendly, now playing pretty neutral, a pretty massive pitching mismatch here with Lucas Giolito and Kevin Gaussman. Not that Giolito's bad. I don't think he's as good as that 379 ERA. The advanced metrics have him more in the low fours, and that's where he projects as well, but still an above average pitcher. Uh, barely, I guess. I guess. Kevin Gaussman, of course, has been fantastic though this season. 318 ERA, advanced metrics, and maybe even a little bit lower. He's one of the best pitchers in baseball. The Blue Jays have a much better set of relievers. They have a better offense, at least with Trout still out. Now, if Trout's out there for the Angels, I think the offenses are actually pretty comparable, but with him out, Blue Jays have an edge there. They're at home. They didn't play two games yesterday. We yeah. assume that Otani is going to play in the event he doesn't. That makes this an even bigger edge, but Toronto minus 190 is a pretty easy A grade pick. Model says that anything uh, minus 207 or better is an A grade. So anything that starts with a one or even the low twos, as long as it's minus 227 or better, it's a B grade. I love the Blue Jays here in this spot. I love backing Kevin Gaussman. He's been really good to us all season. This Blue Jays team. You know, we, it's interesting. They are the team that really is not talked about in the AL East. At least the Orioles are maybe getting a little bit of traction, a little yeah. bit of discussion yeah. now, um, being up towards the top table. We talked about all season Boston and New York get all the talk. Toronto's kind of hanging around there in this playoff race, right? They're, yeah. they're, uh, I, I think they're right now, I think they're in the, the, the last wild card spot, and you don't hear anything about them. I mean, they're still a pretty solid team. Huge series right now for the Angels. I mean, this is one of the yeah. teams they're yeah. going to catch, and the Angels got to catch multiple teams, and that's the problem with where they are. Are. They've got to have multiple things go right. But I mean, hey, you got to start off right now. You can win the games in front of you. I just think this is a really tough spot going against Gaussman. I think Gilito yeah. definitely bolsters the Angels rotation, uh, but this isn't a good spot for them, in my opinion. Toronto minus 190, the A great pick here. Cousin Jared, tell us more. Yeah, so I, I like the the Blue Jays here as, as well. You know, anytime that you get to back Gaussman, you got to feel uh, really good about that. I, I will say that my my limit here where I would probably look at the run line is if this got to, you know, like minus 200, that's probably where I would say, you know, lay the run, lay the run and a half somewhere uh, that you can get pretty decent odds. Uh, just because at that point, it, minus 200 is the point where I would consider a run line play. And obviously with the offense like the Blue Jays, uh, you know, and having Gaussman going, you feel pretty decent about that as well. What I'll say about Lucas Giolito is that his elevated changeup like it is that is a pitch that kind of captivates me still um, hmm. because you just don't see very many pitchers throwing the change up up in the zone and the way that he throws it up in the zone so you, you say that he's just a slightly above average pitcher but the, the elevated change up just does something to me like it, it makes me feel in a certain way uh, is, is it a good way or a bad way? Is it if is, is, is it gives you a little heartache? It's good. No, uh, no, no, it's good. It's okay, good. It's good. Uh, you go the other way because every time to me, a little anxiety of like that, if that thing hangs up a little bit, like that thing, you know, you, you can just see him hanging one of those to Vlad, and that ball's going to go like four hundred and seventy feet, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, and okay, so yes, that can that can definitely happen. But number one, it's like a respect thing, like the guts ah, it yes. takes to consistently True. throw that pitch, and then when it works, it, it just looks really good. So it's almost like a man. I just got to give him props for sticking with that pitch and throwing it so much. Very true. Very true. Model says the Blue Jays win this 71% of the time. Says they cover the run line 54% of the time. And A grade price is basically anything even money or better. Right now, the run line price is plus 107. So you'd have an A grade on the run line as well. Because, Jared, you talk about your process. Now, mine is kind of similar in that it turns out to be about the same way where I play the minus one is when we have a situation where the run line is also minus odds right now the run line is plus odds mm -hmm. and so i've kind of just coded that in maybe we should be playing blue jays minus one here that would also be an a grade pick mm -hmm. 
I, I personally, the minus one and a half is just a tough one for me. I, li- I love personally splitting the wager between the two. Uh, mm-hmm. And that way, you know, if they win by one and you push, whatever, you walk away. Yeah. Uh, but again, I've just got it coded as the official pick. If the run line is plus odds, we're just going to stick to money line. If the run line's minus odds, we're going to go to the minus one. So that's kind of how I do it. Cousin Jared, you kind of talked about yours. Uh, you're just thinking about that minus 200. I know a lot of other betters, have, I've heard the same thing, that 200 is their threshold. They won't play a money line above that. They'll shift to the run line. If you want to do that, if your threshold's a little bit different, or if this price jumps, I think run is still a solid investment. I think it's a good edge. Model says it wins. I get more than half the time. So plus odds is a pretty smart investment here. Total in this game, uh, eight and a half. Model says 8.8. 8. Uh, I'm curious your take on the total. If this is just a like run and hide, because you've got some different things happening in different directions here. You've got a good Blue Jays offense and a bad Angels bullpen, but you've also got a guy like Kevin Gaussman who you feel like could go out there and throw a shutout. You know, he's only averaged six innings to start this year. He's had a couple of really weaker starts, but for the most part, he's a guy you know can go seven innings. Uh, so given that you've got a guy like Gaussman, that makes you lean under. Given that you've got the Blue Jays against this Angels pen that, you know, the Tigers couldn't do anything against them. That was the Tigers, right? The Blue Jays offense yeah. is a lot better, right? I'm curious how you approach this total of eight and a half. This is one of those things where I would just be staying away from this total. Because I, you know, what are you going to get from the Angels after playing two two games the day before? I, you know, Gaussman could give up one run in six innings or something like that. Yeah. It just since you're in a really bad position to to go over. But the, the flip side, it's like, okay, well, if the Blue Jays scored five runs off of the Angels bullpen, like I wouldn't be surprised either. So right. um, this is one of those things like stick to the side, just don't don't mess with this total. Yeah, and we've seen this Angels bullpen, you know, even this last week, I think, blow a four-run lead in the ninth inning. So anything is possible <laughs> when they get involved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Their rating, again, did improve at adding Ronaldo Lopez, but it's still a full standard deviation below league average. So it's still not a very yeah. good set of relievers. That takes us yeah. to our last game, 9.40 p.m. Eastern. Mariners at the Diamondbacks. Uh, we're going to have a pretty big starting pitcher mismatch in this one with Logan Gilbert and Tommy Henry. One of them, a full standard deviation better than average. One, a full standard deviation worse than league average. Here's the interesting thing. The ERAs of these guys are actually pretty similar. They're both around four. Mono says Logan Gilbert in that upper three. That's about right. That makes sense when you look underneath the hood. But Tommy Henry has been a real benefactor of a lot of good luck. His XFIP mm-hmm. is 550. The model projects him to be in yikes. the low fives going forward. Yeah, exactly. Yikes. Uh, he's had some decent results, but he's a guy that I'm very happy to fade because I just do not see this being something that he's able to continue to do. Uh, he's a low strikeout guy and that tends to lead to in, in this day and age you know that tends to lead to a lot of runs being allowed there are very few pitchers in baseball who can be low strikeout guys in today's day and age and get weak contact consistently uh and i just don't see him being one of those so a big pretty, uh, starting pitching mismatch here relievers dimex relievers are very solid of course the mariners bullpen i absolutely love i think i've got them as the best in baseball offensively the key thing here both these offenses are about the same the difference is the mariners offense is pretty right-handed heavy that kind of explains why they struggle offensively eight games out of 10 or whatever, because they tend to face right-handed pitchers because there's more right-handers in baseball, but they get a boost facing lefties because they're so right-handed heavy. And of course, Tommy Henry's a lefty, so it sets mm-hmm. up offensively for them to score runs off of him. We've got an A-grade pick on the Mariners, minus 132. Threshold for the A-grade is minus 138. Anything minus 150 or better is a B-grade model, says they win 62% of the time. Cousin Jared, we're in the Mariners here. I feel like we haven't been on them as much as of late, the last week or so, uh, week and a half, two weeks, somewhere in that ballpark. We were on them so much for so long. Yeah. At the start of that stretch, it worked out well. Uh, towards the back end, they just kept letting us down. Um They've been a really frustrating team really all season with the ups and downs they've had. Taking a little break from the Mariners, coming back to them, you know, I guess we can sleep easy at night. Maybe it's we've had enough of a cool on time. We can jump back on the Mariners. <laughs> what, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, things that you already hit on, right? So just the starting pitching mismatch, I mean, Logan Gilbert's uh, very good. And I'm going to go with uh, the other guy. Tommy Henry is not that great. Uh, we backed him one time earlier this year because he's a lefty part call and he was playing a left-handed hitting line. I think it was the remember. Guardians. Yeah, yeah. And so we were like, okay, well, that makes sense. He's got a lot of good matchups here. Uh, not quite as many good matchups with, with the Mariners. Yeah. Uh, and also, he is, to your point, a, a low strikeout pitcher. And even with the Mariners, like just having such an affinity, for strikeouts. You have to think if there's one guy that they might be able to get to, it's going to be him. 
uh, just because, you know, he, he's not a huge strikeout guy. So, um, yeah, I, I think there's just too much value on the Mariners here. It's one of those things like, have we learned our lesson this year? As good as the Mariners were to us last year, are we ever going to learn our lesson this year? Um, if so, it's not going to be today. Is what I <laughs> yes. Uh, I want to put a pen in the strikeout discussion and talk about the total model projects 9.1. Current total is nine. Uh, Cousin Jared, we were talking about this a little bit before show. I made the dig model, but that doesn't mean I always understand how it comes up with his numbers. I do like most of the time, but sometimes I look at I'm like, I don't know. I just don't see it. Uh, this one, I don't quite understand. Like you do mm -hmm. have a right-handed heavy Mariners offense that is supposed to be better than what it's done. And part of what its struggles have been are the park. They play in a very, yeah, um, yeah. you know, pitcher friendly ballpark. Some of the overall raw numbers, home runs, you know, OPS, some of that's going to be a little bit deflated because they play in one of the few very extreme pitcher friendly ballparks. Right. But even if you look at the park adjusted numbers, it's still not been a good year for them, but they're supposed to be better, but they're right-handed facing a bad lefty. I mean, like that's the only spot you think runs are going to happen. here. You don't think Logan Gilbert's going to give up a ton of runs. The Steinbeck's offense, again, not a bad offense by any stretch of the imagination, mm -hmm. but Logan Gilbert's a very good pitcher. Uh, both these sets of relievers are going to be uh, upgrades over the starters because these relievers are really good. You know, not that, you know, again, nothing against like Logan Gilbert. It's just they got a really good set of relievers who can go out there and throw as hard as they want for one inning, and Gilbert can't afford to do that. If Gilbert only threw one inning, I'm sure he'd be better, right? But, but he can't. Right, right. So you get some good relievers in here, and I'm like, how did he get to 9.1? I mean, I look at this, and I would lean under uh, under 9 just because the only way this game goes over is if the Mariners – you know, put up six runs on Tommy Henry, and even then it might not go over. But the model says right. nine point one, so I'm curious your take on this total here at nine. Uh, seems like an underplay to me. Um, if definitely that's the side that I would I would be on. I just even even like I think you know worst case scenario for the pick that we made on the Mariners, they just can't get a hit because they're striking out all the time, and, and so like. It, it, there is a world where the Mariners aren't scoring very many runs in, in yeah. this game, even though the, the pitching matchup is in, in their favor. Um, yeah, I, the thing is, is like we don't understand why the, the total is set here, but the books agree with you. The books yeah. also have the total set at nine. Yeah. So, like, you know, sometimes you see a discrepancy here, and it's like, oh, man, the books know something that sideline doesn't know. I need to jump on this. But here it's just kind of like oh, everybody seems to be in agreement that nine is the right number. Yeah, I will say, I'm like you, so it's two total picks that we've talked about here that we're not actually officially making. The model doesn't agree with them, but I mean, if you were thinking in that first game, that Tigers-Marlins game, I'd be going under if I was going to play this, so I'd be going under yeah. as well, even though the model does it. model thinks both prices are pretty spot on. Um, I do have to think there is no way, and obviously there is a way, right? And we think yeah. about the world and probably there's always, always. Yeah, there's always being, yeah, I'm being high, uh, you know a little hyperbole yeah. here, but you have to think there's no way that if you bet the Mariners and you bet the under that you're losing both of those, right? Like, oh no, no, it just seems impossible, right? Like, yeah. it, it, and of course, that the Diamondbacks are going to score ten runs themselves, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so you, you you heard it here, guaranteed. We just guaranteed yeah. one of those wins. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it just, it feels like, yeah, like the, the the way the game goes over is the Mariners put up a lot on Tommy Henry. You know, again, the, the Mariners offense can sometimes explode against the bad lefty. This is when they would explode. Yeah. Uh, and that's how the over or the under would lose. The Mariners, how that would lose is yeah. because they just don't hit. And then at that point, the yeah. under's looking really good. So you have to think yeah. probably one of those hits, of course, if not both. But again, the model says 9.1. So I'm passing on the yeah. total. But under yeah. nine, it, I feel like if it was eight and a half, it would be a little bit more like, okay, but under nine just feels like the right pick. But again, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I, we have the model. I'm going to trust the model, and that model's has passed. So we're going to pass. We've talked a lot about strikeouts, though. So coming back to that, our pitcher prop of the day, believe it or not, Tommy Henry, under four and a half strikeouts. And you say, wait a minute. You've just talked about how the Mariners strike out a ton. Here's the interesting thing. When you look at Tommy Henry, not a big strikeout guy, about six Ks per nine, as you can see here from my screen at outlier.bet. Just very up and down sporadic with the number of strikeouts. And when you look at who it's against, the Giants are the third highest strikeout team in baseball. He went six and two thirds against the Giants, only got two strikeouts. He, you know, he come over here against the Nationals who don't strike out very much at all. And he got over this number at five strikeouts against them. It seems pretty sporadic on him. It's not like he's striking out. It's not like he's a guy who gets consistently strikeouts and if you strike out more he's going to strike out more and if you strike out less they're going to strike out less he just seems like a low strikeout guy who just randomly sometimes gets strikeouts and randomly doesn't he's gone 
under this number, nine out of 15 times, that's 60%. Now you do have to consider the fact that the Mariners are playing and they strike out a bunch. So I would say maybe instead of thinking this is 60% likely to hit, I don't think it is. It's probably somewhere around 50, 50, cause you got to adjust that for the Mariners. And the reason this is a good pick, why it's a plus expected value pick according to outlier is the plus 125 on here, that this is somewhere in the 50, 50 ballpark. So plus 125 makes for a smart pick. If you try to play the under five and a half, you're playing at a big juiced price that I don't think has as much value. I think this is a game where he either has two strikeouts or seven strikeouts and who knows which one's going to be, but the plus odds is where it's at here. We're three and one on pitcher props this week. And as long as we're continuing to follow the process like that, that's where we're going to get the profit. So again, I don't know which is going to happen, but plus 125, just a price I can't really pass up because Jared, uh, we're backing the Mariners and we're going under on the opposing pitcher strikeouts against the Mariners. This feels like it could be a disaster either late night or wake up in the morning when you check your phone mm -hmm. type situation, right? Yeah, yeah, it'll definitely be when I when I wake up and check my phone in the morning. I I will not be staying awake to watch. Uh, I'm going to go with whoever the pitcher is for the Diamondbacks. Break my heart. <laughs> I, I, obviously, you know his name. I feel like you're just doing that for funsies. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, you know, I will say with uh, Tommy Henry, the other thing that uh, you can obviously look at here is his outs. And if you, if you scroll down to his innings pitched, uh, the thing that I thought was interesting, uh, I, I'm not going to play his outs prop. I think it's set at 15 and a half. Cousin Jared, I don't know if, if you if you can see this right away. It's interesting to me, though, the number of times he's gone exactly five innings is zero. zero. He has yeah. a single time gone exactly five innings. He has either been pulled in the fifth or if he started the sixth, he, or, it, sorry, he's either been pulled in the fifth or he starts the sixth. There's no, I get done with the fifth and I'm done. And I, th that's very random. I just thought yep. it was interesting that yep. they, if he gets through five, it seems like the manager has enough faith to let him start another inning. So this yep. is a situation where, um, you know, his number, the numbers at 15 and a half, I would not, uh, I'm not jumping on that under, I'm not jumping on the over either, but I'm not jumping on the under because a lot of times pitchers, they'll, they'll, they won't like, they want to start the new inning with a new guy. It makes it easier for the bullpen. And that's not what they've done with Henry. If he gets through five, they put him back out there. Well, that mean it happens here. Obviously not in the situation where, uh, you know, he, he's at a hundred pitches through five. They won't do that. Right. So you, you never really know on that, but uh, they just seem to have a lot of faith in him starting that next inning. And so yep. uh, there's a reason why we're on the strikeout situation, not the outs. And again, plus expected value, according to outlier, we're going to trust the process with the process has been, what are they like? Plus who does the model think is due for some regression, positive or negative three and one this week. Hopefully we can wrap it up with a win. And don't forget if you want to be able to see all of the plus expected value plays and all the data that I'm looking at here to help make these player prop picks, lots of value. If you sign up at outlier, dot bet they integrate seamlessly with the four big domestic sports books allow you shop for best prices and just click a button take you right there to make the bet you can also see a lot of trends and data sign up today dot liar dot bet slash professor for a seven day free trial to check them out and remember if you're not playing daily fantasy yet thrive fantasy is another official partner of picks with the professor you can pick an entire lineup of players in a contest against other people or Choose a couple props that parlay them together. And if they all win, you win. New users that use the promo code sides or the sign up link in the show description get 100% instant first deposit match up to $250. Cousin Jared, that's our show for today. Do you have any parting words for people's weekends? Yeah, I was just thinking, what is the best gas station and why is it Bucky's? And let me tell you why. The reason is number one, when you're on a road trip, it has competitively priced gas. And it has the best restroom. So if you're on a road trip, like, boom, like, literally, like, what else do you need? Some but decent other, barbecue, too. Yeah, yeah. So that, okay. You proved my point. My next yeah. point without me having to say anything. They have something for everybody. For you, it yeah. might be the barbecue. For me, personally, it's the coffee. For my yeah. wife, it's the gummy bears. For my daughter, it's the icy. And so literally, it's just. It's I would have thought those would be flipped, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but see, the thing is, is it, it's just got something for everybody. Anyway, yeah. I was thinking about Bucky's the other night. I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure they that. they do the like uh, cinnamon sugar coated pecans as well, right? Which are also. Again, they have something for everybody. They do everything. I mean, just yeah. like everything you could possibly imagine they have. 
if, if is Bucky's only in Texas? Have they expanded out of the state at this point? I know there's a ton of them here in Texas. There, there are a a more than a few outside of the state. Okay. Uh, usually, obviously, mostly in the south. Uh, but unfortunately, there is only one between Baytown, Texas, and uh, the beach that we went to in Florida. And so mm-hmm. I had to wait. I don't know. Let's say about 500 miles before I was able to stop at another Bucky's. Um, but anyway, I, I who's did. counting? Yeah, I, I was. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm curious, you know, if we've, we've, you know, who, who's watching the show and is like, I've never even heard of Bucky's. If you haven't heard of Bucky's, just, just Google it. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, yeah. it's a fantastic place. If you're in the yeah. South and you're familiar with Bucky's, you're probably like, yes, I'm, I'm well aware. It's a great place. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, they built a, a huge one uh, just up from the road from where we are here in Denton. And so uh, mm-hmm. we, when, when we've had friends come from out of town, from uh, out, out of state, uh, further away, we've had mm-hmm. to take them to Bucky's and they're always yeah. like super impressed with it. It's, it's a lot of fun. So we, if you're ever in the South and you haven't been to one, make sure you find, find yeah. a Bucky's. It's a good point. Uh, very weird yeah. point to end on, but but here we yeah. are. Uh, yeah. It's Friday for you folks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thanks for tuning into this episode of Pictures of the Professor. Don't forget to subscribe so you can control the sports betting content providing this channel is dropped right into your feed. And we will be back again on Monday for more baseball betting content. But until then, as always, best of luck. And remember, you can get your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.